and I, I find that feeling so disgusting. Let's talk about period poop, okay? I have period poop. Where is this like it's not diarrhea? Understand that my body is going through a lot because I actually don't like the feeling of bleeding, but I appreciate it. I appreciate my period because it's, it's part of the symbol of my superhero. Welcome back to my channel, I'm Kupanish Mange, and this is How I Do Things, a show where you send me your questions, and I'll let you know how I would do things, and I can take it as entertainment, use it as advice, take it, don't take it, use it, don't use it at all, my darlings, listen, do what you will with it, honestly, do what you will with it, because me, nah, ek, moi, not a professional, I'm not a professional at all, like, seriously, on a very, very serious note, I'm not a professional, I'm not a gynecologist, I'm not a nurse, I'm nowhere close to that vicinity, I call myself a vagina enthusiast, I am on my period right now, I am bleeding, as we speak I've had two poops so far and it is only 11 a.m. in the morning okay like it's bad it's bad hey I feel it I feel it pimple pimple it's real like I'm 32 years old and I still mess on myself like what is this like you want to call it childish but if I'm still gonna be 32 years old and I've had my period for like 16 years and I'm still messing on myself it's bleeding, it's poop, it's things you go through all the time, it's headaches, it's nausea, it's back pain. Send help! This video we're going to be talking about periods and what is an actual menstrual cycle? What is a period? How does it feel? The mood swings, PMS, period flu, and then we're going to get into some notes in terms of when should you actually see your doctor and when is it not normal what you're going through. Let's get into it. Number one. Number one is your menstrual story. Every girl has their menstrual story when it started, what happened, and how it's currently going right now. Mine starts when I was 13 years old, um, December period 13. We just came back from visiting my grandmother. And my grandmother stayed about six hours away. It was a six hour trip. Um, and we were getting close to home. And one of our pit stops, I noticed that I had like little sprinkles of blood on my skirt. Beautiful baby blue skirt in the days. It was a bill, billabong, billabong. That brand, <laughs> the surfing brand, right? And I was like, oh no, it's brand new. Um, it was one of my Christmas clothing. You know, back, you know, we used to buy Christmas clothing as kids and you used to have to take care of it. Oh, I knew my mom was gonna have me. She was gonna smack my booty for this. So I changed my outfit into another pair of new clothing and my mom was probably thinking to myself, this child wants to wear all her Christmas clothing all at once. But it was because I messed on myself. And then I got home and I was with my cousin who's my bestie and um, I told her, I've got another spot on my jeans. Like I keep seeing blood. And we're sitting there in the dining room back home. We get home, it's in the evening. And she's like, I think you're on your period. You should tell your mom. And I was scared to tell my mom because I thought I'd be in trouble. Then eventually my mom walks in because I think she knew something was happening. That woman always knows. And I tell her, mom, I think I'm on my period. And she goes, wow, so good he's always. Because <laughs> I think she knew and I was making a whole fuss out of it and I wasn't telling her. Um, so she then told me all about it. She told me about what a pad is. She told me about a tampon. She told me about how to use them and she told me how to dispose of them as well, which is really, really important, which I didn't include in this video. But maybe we'll have another video about pad versus tampon, how to dispose of them, etc. Part of my period story is having kids. I've had two kids and my first baby, my period stopped for almost a year and then it came back and it was the most beautiful thing. After giving birth, I didn't have my period for almost a year. <gasps> I enjoyed it. I enjoyed not having my period because I just don't like bleeding. Um, but I appreciate it. I appreciate my period because it's, it's part of the symbol of my superhero. Number two, what is a period or menstruation or menses? It is a period of three to seven days where you're basically bleeding through the vagina. Blood comes from the uterus through the birth canal or the vagina or the hole that's at the bottom of your body, not the poop place, but the other one. Through there, blood comes out. So during the first two to three days, you have a heavier flow of blood. And then the last two to four days, it's a lighter flow of blood. Personally, I like to call it my period is the first three days where I have heavier flow. And then the rest, I call it cleanup, where I know it's like it's lighter, it's trickling down. 
During the first three days, I wear a tampon and a pad because I'm heavy and I don't like the feeling of bleeding and I don't like messing on myself. You can decide that do you want to use a, a, a cup, right? Do you want to use a tampon? Do you want to use a pad? There are different ways that you can actually catch the, the blood that is coming out of your body and then dispose of it. Um, more and more people are starting to use the cup, menstrual cup that you actually fold, you put it up there and then it catches the blood and then you take it out, dispose of the blood, wash and put it back inside. Number three, what is the menstrual cycle? Your period or your menses or your menstruation is actually only one phase of the four phases in the menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle lasts four weeks or 28 days. It starts from the first day of your period and ends on the day right before the next period starts. And it should be about 28 days long. So that means that you go on your period every, you know, every month. But some people do have irregular periods. Now I know some people who can skip three months, who can have one every three months. Some people can have them quite irregular throughout the year and it should be something that you should talk to your doctor or to your nurse about just to make sure that everything is okay don't be afraid to go see the vagina specialists about this because they've studied this and they know more about it if you feel as though your period irregularity is something that makes you worry see someone about it and talk to them about it. So when you talk about the menstrual cycle, there are four phases of the menstrual cycle that lasts four weeks. There's the menstruation, which we just spoke, to, spoke about now, or the period that we like to call it. There's a follicular phase, there's the ovulation, and then there's the luteal phase, which I'm going to explain to you in the next point. Okay, so number four is about the different phases of your menstruation. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because it is linked to all the mood swings and us wanting to eat food and us wanting to watch the notebook and cry with our friends. I'm just laying the foundation so we understand what we're actually going through during those four weeks. I feel like we're always on. Even if you're not bleeding, you're at some point in the menstrual cycle, right? So what are the four phases of the menstrual cycle? The first one is menstruation, your period, where you're actually bleeding through the, through the vagina, where blood is coming out of your body. So the second phase is the follicular phase. I like to think of this phase as the time when an egg is being prepared and matured which then leads into ovulation now during the follicular phase you're also building up some blood along your uterus and this is basically preparing you for possible pregnancy so when we move into the third phase when a mature egg moves through the fallopian tubes into your uterus this is prime time to fall pregnant so if you're one of those people who's looking to fall pregnant you're going to want to track when you ovulate. You can actually tell when you're ovulating, which is funny because before trying to fall pregnant, you don't really pay attention to it until the time comes when you want to fall pregnant. Then you start to notice certain things like a thick, clear mucus coming out from your vagina. Around about halfway through your menstrual cycle. So on one end, there's a time when you're bleeding and then on the other end, there's a time when you have that thick white mucus coming out of your vagina and that is ovulation, a sign of ovulation. Another sign is a slight rise in your body temperature. So this is why when you get an ovulation kit, it will measure your temperature, it will ask you to measure a little bit of the flu fluid that's going on down there and then you get to see if it's the prime time to fall pregnant and to fertilize the egg. So this then moves us to the final phase of your menstrual cycle. So the final phase is the luteal phase. I hope I'm saying it right. It sounds nice to me, luteal phase. So this is when now you're really preparing to fall pregnant and the lining in your uterus thickens with the blood that can either A, come out if the egg is not fertilized or it stays there and the egg attaches if it is fertilized. So during this phase is, you know, is the red or the blue pill? Are we pregnant or are we not pregnant? If you have been sexually active, then you could be very, very, very nervous during this time because you're just like, am I going to fertilize and attach and the blood is going to stay in or am I not? Now, here's the thing. It's not 100%. Yes, there are period people who have seen some blood come out even though they are pregnant. So it's not a 100% indication every single time. Um, 
but it is a pretty good one. Do see your doctor if there are any irregularities, if there are things that you don't notice, especially if you don't have a consistent cycle, then sometimes you may need to go see your doctor so that you may need to know, am I pregnant or am I just having an inconsistent cycle? Ah, my leg is dying. You blood flow. Ewee, okay. <laughs> okay. So the reason why I laid down this foundation is not only just to talk about ovulation, but to also point out that hormones are being released during this time. There's estrogen and progesterone, which these actually affect your mood, right? So these hormones that are going up and down during this time through the menstrual cycle actually affect how you feel. And this just leads me to point number five, which is mood swings and PMS. So during this time, you're gonna have changes in estrogen and progesterone. Now, these changes also influence serotonin. Serotonin, is it regulates your mood, how well you sleep, as well as your appetite. Low levels of serotonin can cause mood swings, it can cause funky, weird food cravings, and it can also affect your sleep. And these are the symptoms of, wait for it, PMS, premenstrual syndrome. These are the things that happen when you go through PMS. Now I'm gonna read them out on my phone. Sadness, irritability, anxiety, anger, cravings, bad sleep, all part of the symptoms that you go through when you have PMS and it's it can be linked to lower serotonin, which is influenced by the changes in estrogen and progesterone. So that just makes sense. During all this time, when you're going through the different phases of your menstrual cycle, it affects these things and causes then PMS. So if somebody wants to say that PMS is not real and why I feel like watching the notebook and crying and why I'm craving chocolate at a funny time of the month, or I just feel like sleeping, understand that my body is going through a lot, a lot. So PMS happens before our period, preparing for the time where we take the red or the blue pill, whether we bleed or we fall pregnant. What happens then afterwards? This leads me to point number six, which is period flu. Period flu is not actually a, a medical term in any sort of way, but it's a term that we use to basically describe what a person goes through during the period. We are going through a lot. It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot that we are going through. Period flu is the combination of how we feel during the period. Period pains, back aches, the cramps that we have, the mood swings that we can go through, irritability when we are sleeping, headaches, dizziness. Some of the other symptoms include diarrhea, constipation, fatigue, muscle aches, cramps, fever, and chills, as well as nausea. These are all pretty normal during a period and it's a lot to go through. Now you must function as a normal human being. While you are feeling nauseous, you are constipated and diarrhea at the same time. Let's talk about period poop, okay? I have period poop, where it's just like it's not diarrhea, but I am pooping several times a day, right? I'm quite regular, I poop once a day. But when I'm on my periodical, I poop at least two to four times a day. And we're talking about poop because it's a period here, hey? And then, remember, during PMS, which is pre-menstrual syndrome, you get bloated. I feel like that bloatedness, that pooch that develops right there, it's holding gas. Gas that is just maturing till the perfect point. And then when I'm on my period, woo, child, it doesn't smell great. Like it, it's not great to be in a relationship with me during that time. And to be honest with you, I just, I, why must we go through this? Okay, so I was legitimately having a full on rant about period poop and then my battery died. So clearly that's a sign that girl, we've heard enough about your poop. But the point is, period flu is real. It's not a medical term, but it is definitely just an acknowledgement of all the things that a person feels when they go through their period, that you feel kind of crappy that your mood might be off and understandably so. You are bleeding, your feeling is off, bleed sometimes. Like my flow is that heavy that I can feel it through seven, several times a day. And that you're just going through some stuff. You have period pains, you um, might be messing on yourself every now and again, that you have a headache or nausea or diarrhea and your fart really smells really bad. <laughs> Whatever you're going through, period um, flu is real. And this just leads me to number seven 
ways in which that you can deal with period flu. So they are about four things that you can do to deal with period flu. The first is over-the-counter medication, especially for your period pains. People don't understand that period pains are actually really, really bad, that sometimes all you want to do is sit in bed and do nothing. So a lot of the over-the-counter medication is anti-inflammatory medication, which would have something like ibuprofen in it. It would be something that would help with your back pain, that would alleviate the headaches, as well as any muscle cramps that you might have. It's really good to actually ask your gynae or your doctor, which medication should I specifically take for my period pains? Or when you go to your pharmacist, say, listen, I'm not just here for pain, I'm here for period pain. And they can give you medication that has been specifically made for that to target the period flu symptoms, back pain, nausea, headaches, muscle cramps, and give you something that is more aligned to that. So sometimes you might wanna take a headache tablet or just a painkiller in general, and it might not give you the good relief that you're looking for. But if you actually say that, yo, I've got period pains, I've got back pain, I've got nausea, I've got diarrhea, give me something, then they will actually be able to give you something that's more aligned to that. Then there are heating pads. So this, for example, is a hot water bottle, which is a form of a heating tool. They are heating patches and heating pads, something that you can take and you just stick it onto the back onto your lower back and that just gives you heat into that area and reduces the pain that you're going through especially you have to be in an office or you have to be on a shoot or you have to be somewhere and you don't want to be irritated or carry around one of these then you can definitely use heat patches to deal with your period flu, your period cramps or anything that you may be going through the lower back pain that you might be experiencing the next is an anti-diarrhea drug. You can go to a pharmacist, you can go to a drugstore, some people may call them, and talk to your pharmacist and say, hey, I experience diarrhea that comes along with my period. Is there something that I can take for them? Like I said, I can actually go to the toilet multiple times a day because of my period, and I can tell that it's period poop. It is not firm, but it is not completely loose. But some people do have quite loose stool, and that can be quite frustrating. You can then go to a pharmacist, get something over the counter, and ask them, hey, I've got period-related diarrhea. Is there something that I can take? And then the fourth thing is to just stay hydrated. Your body goes through a lot, and hydration Hydration actually helps to just make it easier for your body to function. So a lot of the times people will just say, you have a headache, have water. You have diarrhea, have water. Have You have pimples, have water. And I get it, we're supposed to drink water and it seems as though water is not the cure. But it's not about it being the cure, but about it making the process feel better for you. Now, I'm personally going to add that as a woman, I like to take anti, I like to take probiotics. And I take this throughout the month and I take one probiotic throughout the month. Now, if I was working with a brand, this would be the perfect place to plug a probiotic. But a feminine probiotic, which is specifically taken and we're looking at the probiotics that we put into our bodies to help our bodies function better. Probiotics every day as just a normal supplement that you're taking. So if you're taking your vitamins, your minerals, add a probiotic, especially as a woman, it helps our bodily functions. This is something that my gynae also recommended to me as well and said, hey, take probiotics is something that you take every single day if you're taking probiotics let me know in the comment section down below which one are you taking and how has it been working for you personally i feel as though my body functions so much better when i'm on probiotics so along with the with the diarrhea along with my period along with my my gut your gut is at the center of everything it's literally physically there but it's also at the phys at the center of the symptoms that you go through in life so as a woman when you take probiotics it's a big Plus, so um, let's have a conversation down below and maybe I'll recommend the probiotics that I take. And finally, number eight. We've spoken about all the things that we go through with our periods. And I think this is probably a very long video, but I cannot end it without talking about endometriosis. Now, for some people, this is the first time that they've heard about endometriosis. And for others, you've probably heard about it in passing, but you haven't really thought about it. The thing about endometriosis is that it can go undiagnosed for a large part of your life. And there's a large popularity of population of women who have or suffer from endometriosis and don't actually know about it. Because here's the thing, I'm gonna tell you the list of symptoms that you can find when you have endometriosis that can are uh, telltale signs to endometriosis. And what you'll see is that these are pretty similar to just normal way of life as a woman when you have your period. So they include back pain during your period, severe menstrual cramps, pain during when you poop or when you pee, especially when you are on your period, unusual or heavy bleeding during your period, 
um, blood in your stool or in your urine, diarrhea or constipation, painful sex, fatigue that won't go away, and trouble getting pregnant. Now here's my thing. I've always had a heavy flow um, and I have quite bad menstrual cramps. And when I talk to people about it, it's just like, oh, that's just normal. That's just part of being a woman. That's just part of your, your period. Um, that's just part of how things are. A lot of the times when women have endometriosis, especially undiagnosed endometriosis, a lot of it gets just written off and just shrugged off because, oh, that's just the way of life. Oh, that's just how things happen. But it makes you feel crazy that, no, I don't feel like this is normal. And it really does go undiagnosed. You can go see a number of doctors and they don't pick up on it. But it could be the reason behind your painful sex. It could be the reason behind your struggle in getting pregnant. It could be the reason behind your severe cramps or the blood in your poop or in your pee. These are things that people can write off during your diarrhea or your constipation. And they just write it off as all being part of being a woman. And this whole thing of just be strong is part of the reason why it goes undiagnosed. That we just write it off. We never talk to anybody because it's as if we are crybabies and not strong enough to deal with things of being a woman. But it is really important that if you feel as though, no, I don't feel like my, my menstrual cramps are normal. I don't feel like I should be having painful sex. I don't feel like the level of blood that I, I release during my period is normal, then push for it. See someone, get a second opinion and do it until you feel comfortable because it, it does happen. Doctors do miss it. And um, there are solutions for it. There are ways that you can deal with it, especially when you get diagnosed. The one thing that I learned when I researched and when I studied and I've been exposed to information about endometriosis is that Women feel crazy for feeling like there's something wrong, especially when these are symptoms that everybody else suffers from. Back pain, constipation, diarrhea during your periods, fatigue, trouble getting pregnant. Oh, it will happen at the right time. But if you feel that you really, that there could be something there, talk to your doctor about it. And don't be afraid to get a second opinion about it. Um, and don't be afraid to check on it every so few years. It's completely okay. It's completely your choice. It is your body. So do ask a professional about it. Shoo! Okay, this was a lot. <laughs> this was a lot. I'm so happy that we got to the end of this video. I'm happy that we finally did this video. As much as we spoke about a lot, I feel like we're as if it was very surface level. We could have gone deeper about, about period flu, period pains, cramps, diarrhea, we could have gone deeper about endometriosis, we could have spoken about more about what do we use during our periods, how often do we change, how do we clean ourselves during our periods. There's so much to go through with this that I, I definitely think we need more videos. So comment down below with your question. What question do you have about your menstrual cycle, about your period, about ovulation, about endometriosis, about anything? And let's actually try and get a professional in the room to try and sit with us and talk about this entire subject. But thank you so much for watching and thank you for giving this video a big thumbs up. If you have a friend, a sister, an auntie who needs to see this video, please do share it with her because we really love to share the sisterly love over here. The more this channel grows, the more, just the more. Just the more. The more, the more. That's all I'm asking for. Until next time, beautiful people. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. Toodles. Hey gorgeous, if you made it to this point of the video, then it means that you're not angry with me for not wearing makeup this time around. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that you do click on the circle to um, subscribe to my channel and feel free to binge watch. There's a whole lot of videos about vaginal health and feminine wellness, as well as relationships and faith as well. And a smidgen of chela de cash money here and there. Thank you so much for the support and thank you for watching this video. Until next time. Mwah.